Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell, and today we're going to talk about how to use Lambda functions with threading building blocks. I have here some code that actually came out of the threading building blocks reference manual. It's just a parallel reduction, and we have here a sum class that provides the body for the code that gets called by the, by the reducer. Now notice in here we have two functions. We have the function that goes through the blocked range that was passed into it and gathers up the, the values inside the array and adds it to an accumulator. Then down here we have a join function. Now the whole idea here is that threading building blocks will break up our array in, into smaller blocked ranges and each time we, we work with one of these blocked ranges, we add up all the values. And then threading building blocks will eventually call our join function. And that's where we take these individual partial sums and add them up. Now this works really well, but we had to create an entire class just to hold these two functions. So let's see how we can do it with lambda functions. Now I have over here what's essentially the same code, but without that extra class. What we've done here is I'm calling parallel reduce, and I'm passing in my array, which by the way is just a tiny array, and normally we wouldn't actually use a threading building blocks to do such a small array, but the concept is, is the same whether we use a tiny array or a, a massive array. So I'm passing in that array, and then I pass a starting value, and here, right here, are my two lambda functions. Now, I'm going to pull up the original code here. And you can see, it's actually the same code. Uh, we're looping through, in the, in the original, we're looping through the block range that was passed into us and adding it to our accumulator. And that's the exact same thing we're doing here. Then we return that value. And then we also have a join function, and that's what we have down here. So we have two functions, both are lambda functions. We have our, our addition function, as well as our join. And we're using the lambda syntax here. Uh, right here, we're not actually uh, using any local variables inside there. And in here, we've got the parameters. And let's look again at the original. It's almost the same, except in here we have a value, which is our running total. Over here, we, we don't have a local variable to use there, so instead it gets passed in, in as a parameter. And then the join function is almost the same, but the join function takes in another instance of our sum class in the original. Here we don't have a sum class. Instead, we just pass in two parameters, the value for the previous one and the value for the current and then we sum them and return them. And that's really all there is to it. Let's go ahead and compile both of these and we'll see that they they both work exactly the same. Since we're using C++11 we have to include the standard here in our, our G++ compiler. And we need to tell it that we are using threading building blocks. And it summed our four numbers here. One plus two plus three plus four is indeed ten. Now let's, let's do the same thing with the other one. And same deal, we got the same answer. So you can see we were able to replace that big sum class with two simple functions that are lambda functions and pass those right in without having to create an entire class.